From the late 60s to the early 90s, London saw more than its fair share of protests. These were some of the ugliest scenes of violence London has seen this year. From anti-apartheid demonstrations and more than 20 people arrested to anti-Thatcher riots. While some protesters were unquestionably violent, many more were peaceful. But that didn't stop the special demonstration squad from spying. They started putting um, undercover officers very deep undercover, sometimes for five years, um, and they gave them a completely false identity. Many of those officers um, started uh, intimate relationships with women in, in the groups that they were infiltrating or associated with the groups. And then the officers, when they were withdrawn, uh, just disappeared, vanished into thin air. What started last century carried into the next. Two years ago, Queenslanders Ellie and Wendy got some news that shook them. A close friend they'd known and trusted for more than 18 years since their time in London called to make a confession. He was an undercover officer who'd been sent to spy on them. His name was James Straven, and when Ellie was 21, he'd been more than just a friend. He was my first love and was one of my oldest friends. It was basically a con, an 18-year con. Ellie wasn't an activist, but her housemate Wendy was. In the 90s, fox hunt saboteurs were setting out to disrupt a practice they believed was profoundly cruel. It can't be pulled out because a terrier has it by the face. Confrontations were common, but Wendy says her group knew the law. What they didn't know was that one of their members was an undercover police officer. James Straven was a cover name used by an officer known as HN16. According to the public inquiry into undercover policing, he also used the name Kevin Crossland, that of a boy who died in a 1966 plane crash. In 2001, after meeting her through Wendy, HN16 began a sexual relationship with Ellie. He broke it off in 2002, but he kept returning to their lives and continued to meet Ellie and Wendy when they flew to the UK for visits. They're both struggling to deal with two decades of deception. Ellie hasn't dated since she found out. It's almost like you're grieving for a friend that's died. But at the same time, he never existed. You can't just go and invade somebody's entire life and weave webs of lies because you'd like to know a bit more about them. We did not consent to having relationships with undercover police officers. When she was 24, environmental campaigner Helen Steele fell in love with fellow protester John Barker. She planned on spending the rest of her life with him. But the man she thought she knew was an undercover officer named John Dines, who'd assumed the identity of a child who died of leukaemia. After a two-year relationship, he disappeared, but in 2016 she tracked him down in Sydney and he apologised. John Dines was working for Charles Sturt University's Graduate School of Policing and Security. He's still there, but is not believed to be actively teaching. Neither he nor the university would comment. The officers were told that this was a good way to, to, to get information, was to use women in this way, emotionally manipulate us. In one of the most high profile cases, undercover officer Bob Lambert fathered a child while posing as a protester. Police say undercover work is both necessary and lawful, but they concede these relationships should never have occurred. At least 30 women were deceived and some have received compensation, but they still haven't been given access to the files that were kept on them. Now that public hearings are finally underway, they're desperate to find out who authorised the relationships, what information was gathered and who else might have been spying on them. They have a right to know what was, why this happened, what was written about them. They will never heal without knowing, uh, having that information. And Ellie and Wendy say they'll forever be suspicious of who might be watching. Nick Dole, ABC News, London.